let us discuss about this let us discuss about the digestive glands today the digestive glands includes the salivary glands present very close to the buccal cavity the gastric glands present in the stomach the liver and pancreas which are closely associated with small intestine and the intestinal glands present inside small intestine these are the various glands we will start with the salivary glands salivary glands contains a group of several acini round structures called as acini one round structure is called as acinus i took one acinus and i am observing it contains a group of cells if the group of cells produce saliva it has got a lumen i took one acinus these round structures are called as acini i took one acinus and i observed it contain a group of cells with a cavity at the center cavity is called as lumen now these cells they secrete saliva into the lumen and that saliva is cali is carried by intercalated duct it carried outside by intercalated duct a few intercalated ducts combine together to form intralobular duct a few intralobular ducts combine together to form interlobular duct a few interlobular ducts combine together to form the main salivary duct so if you start from the beginning there is a main salivary duct it branches into several interlobular ducts the each interlobular ducts divide into several intralobular ducts each intralobular duct several again divides into several intercalated intercalated ducts each of that duct opens into one acinus now such type of arrangement is called racemose type racemose means it resembles a bunch of grapes so salivary glands they are racemose type now we have the major salivary glands and minor salivary glands we see the major salivary glands salivary glands are two types major and minor so first we will see the major salivary glands it includes the parotid glands parotid glands location so it is present just it is present just beneath the ear pinna it is present beneath the ear pinna and slightly anterior to the ear pinna and this is the largest glands largest salivary glands each salivary gland is around 20 to 30 grams in weight and they produces ducts the duct is called as tensions duct the parotid gland this is the parotid gland Let's not confuse that with the parotid glands. Parotid glands are present in bufo. Bufo is common toad. It produces obnoxious secretions to avoid itself from the predators. This is the parotid gland. This is the largest salivary gland, and it has got a duct. The duct is called as tensions duct, named after Nicolo Steno, the Danish anatomist who first identified that. And the tensions duct is opening near the second upper molar. as the location huh? incisors canines premolars molars molars are at the ending so we got three molars 
at the top. So at the center molar, the second molar, the stensus duct is opening. There are also submaxillary glands. Submaxillary glands are also called as submandibular glands. Submaxillary or submandibular glands. They are present medial to mandibles. Uh, that, that is the maxilla. This is the mandible. So this 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 mandible medial to mandible. And I say medial towards the inside. So medial to mandible in the maxillary triangle. In the maxillary triangle. That means where mandibles and maxilla meet with each other. Little inside. Hmm? Just medial to the mandibles, you will find submaxillary glands. You can call them as submaxillary or submandibular, both same. Now, originating from submaxillary glands, there is Wharton's duct. It is called Wharton's duct. Wharton's duct is opening just beneath the tongue. See, that is the lingual frenulum. That vertical thin layer. That is called lingual frenulum. Either side of lingual frenulum. See, this is the tongue. You can see lingual frenulum at the center, inferiorly. Inferior lingual frenulum. On the either side, there is a papilla. The papilla is called a sublingual caruncle. So on that papillae, you can see that Wharton's duct is opening. That, that, that's opening there. The weight of each submaxillary gland is around 8 to 10 grams. The last of the salivary glands is sublingual glands. They are the smallest salivary glands. Weight is 2 to 3 grams. Weight of sublingual glands is 2 to 3 grams. They are the smallest salivary glands. And they are present beneath the tongue. Each gland is only weighing 2 to 3 grams. Each, each gland uh, 5 to 15 ducts smaller ducts so they are present here by smaller ducts they are also opening at the same place wherever submaxillary gland is opening wherever submaxillary, submaxillary gland is opening here on the either side of lingual frenulum it is opening so these ducts these ducts are called ducts of ribbonus so this gland is sublingual gland This is the sublingual gland. From sublingual gland, each sublingual gland, some 5 to 15 ducts. Ducts of Rivinus are coming. They are all opening at the same location. They are all they are opening at the same location where submaxillary glands are opening. Yeah. So these are the major salivary glands. In case of rabbit, there are four pairs of salivary glands. Additionally, there are something called as infraorbital glands present beneath the orbit. But in case of human being, there are only three pairs of major salivary glands. The parotid, submaxillary or submandibular and sublingual glands. Out of this, smallest is sublingual glands, largest is the parotid glands. Parotid gland location is beneath the ear pinna. Submaxillary glands, they are present medial to mandibles in the maxillary triangle. Sublingual glands, they are present beneath the tongue. Parotid glands, from parotid glands, Stenson's duct originates. Submaxillary or submandibular gland, Wharton's duct originates. Sublingual glands, ducts of Rivinus originates. Parotid glands, Stenson's duct. Stenson's duct opens near the second upper molar. Submaxillary, submandibular glands, Wharton's duct, the duct originating from that Wharton's duct, is opening on the either side of lingual frenulum. 
on the sublingual caruncle. The duct of Rivinus, ducts of Rivinus, 5 to 15 ducts of Rivinus, each coming from one sublingual gland, are also opening on the sublingual caruncle only on the either side of lingual frenulum. So these are the major salivary glands. Continuation. We also have the minor salivary glands. There are some 800 to 1000 minor salivary glands present throughout the mucous membrane surrounding the oral cavity. Surrounding the oral cavity. And they are made up of only few cells and they are not encapsulated. In major salivary glands they are encapsulated. That means that gland is covered by capsule. But in minor salivary glands they are not enclosed by a capsule. And some of the minor salivary glands includes the lingual glands, the labial glands. Buccal glands or molar glands. Parietal glands. Some of these, some of the important based on location where they are present. Lingual tongue, at the back of the tongue, at the anterior of the tongue. See, some of them are present. They are called lingual glands. Labial glands. Labia means lower lip. So very close to the oral orifice. Very, very close to the oral orifice, you can see the labial glands. Close to the mouth opening. The buccal glands or molar glands are present in the cheek. Between the mucous layer inside and the buccinator muscle outside. Between mandible and maxillae, there is a muscle. The muscle is called as buccinator muscle. So in between buccinator muscle and the mucous layer inside, you, you will find the buccal glands also called molar glands. Parietal glands, they are present in the soft palate. So these are some of the minor salivary glands. <coughs> 